I want to get something straight. So Thingman posted a video the other day about his Christmas tree, how it is so amazing and the best Christmas tree out there. But no, 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 man. I got to show you something. Bam! Check this Christmas tree, Thingman. <laughs> Yo, that intro I just did has to be the best intro on my channel. Am I right? Come on, don't leave me hanging. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen my previous video yet, what I'm doing right now is a video series where I try to improve my 3x3 as fast as I can. In my previous video, I chose my new main, which is, spoiler alert, it is the Valk 3 Elite. In that video, I also asked you guys very kindly to subscribe to my channel and this happened. Like after doing a year of YouTube, it turns out that all I have to do is ask you guys? Why couldn't you tell me? So, dear sir, madam, if you're watching, Please subscribe. I love you so much. Have a wonderful day. Now today we will actually start our improvement. And I think the best way to do that is to first figure out what we have to improve. Pretty clever, right? So what we will do today is do our first average of 100 using this cube. And using that average, we're going to see what my weak points are. So I'm basically going to critique my own souls. Now for you, if you're joining me along this journey, you do the same thing. Like do an average of 100, 500, 1000, a million. 100 is probably enough. And then just try to figure out with each solve you do, like, what can I improve? If you have done that, let me know your weak points, what you need to work on, and we'll tackle them together in the next episodes. But for now, let's start this day's practice. But I first want to talk about something important. Usually when I'm practicing cubing, it, it kind of looks like this. That was a totally legit stop. Well, if I would have done the right PLL, it would be the same time, so it counts. Okay, well, mm, this one maybe doesn't count. But I'm gonna keep the time. Am I ashamed of this? Well, yeah. <laughs> but to prevent stuff like this from happening, we're going to set up some special rules, right? And it all starts with this little guy. This right here is a stackman timer. It is used to time souls in official cubing competitions. How does it work? Well, you get 15 seconds of inspection time, then you place both hands on the timer, you do your solve, and stop the timer using both your hands. Please don't use your palms. And there you have your time. Wow. This is okay. This is a plus two. And this is a DNF. Yeah, sorry, man. Go cry. Now, since this timer is used in official competitions, it makes perfect sense to use it during our practice sessions, right? It will prevent me doing stupid stuff like this. What plus two? So let's do it. I just slapped myself and it kind of hurt. Hey, so let's do it. Average of 100, no cheating. I'm very curious. I, I would say that my average will be sub 10, like barely sub 10 because I average like nine and a half using just my keyboard. So, so everything under 10 seconds, I'm happy with. Everything above, not so. Scramble is very good, by the way. Oh uh, no, I messed up. Nine point nine eight. That's up then. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to show you the entire average. But if you want to see it, just watch this clip at point one percent speed. This is some strong coffee. So yesterday I've been critiquing my souls the entire night. I, I watched every single solve I did. That was like super boring, but I think I have a great understanding now of my flaws during my souls. I actually wrote down 10 things I need to work on and most of the mistakes you see in my souls fit in one of these categories. So what I'm going to do right now is I selected five souls, I think. We're going to watch them together and I'll basically critique my own souls. Now, first things first, here is the overview of the entire average. As you can see, I started out pretty bad my average was starting out around like 10 and a half you know th that's not good but then around here it started to go down and the reason for that is i had my camera right here it was annoying so i had to sit like this the entire time then i moved the camera just a little bit that i could sit normally and then everything went better yeah that's my excuse okay <laughs> my my throat is dry let me drink some water yeah, this is water. I, ne I never said it was coffee or anything. Flashback. This is some strong coffee. So overall, I managed to get a sub 10 average of 100, which is, you know, with a stack mat and being very critical in my mistakes, is 
is actually decent. I think if I could get rid of all these spikes right here, like the 13s, the 12s, the 11s, probably some of them are plus twos. If I can get rid of them, my average will go down by quite a lot. So it's a good thing to figure out like why that is happening. You know, at the end, I had my best average, which was an 8.89. I could have had a much better average somewhere in between. I will show you why that didn't happen in just a moment. I'm pretty satisfied, you know, it's, it's what I expected. But anyways, let's critique some solves. Here's the first solve I want to show you. And I wrote down one, two, three, four, five, six major flaws in this solve. So that's that, that wasn't a great solve. Let's first watch this solve. Eleven point eleven. So it wasn't a great solve, and here's part of the reason why. So first of all, I took four seconds inspection time, maybe five, which is it, it would have been enough if I if I got to predict my first pair. But after doing the cross, you see a pass right here. It's like a moment I do nothing. I, I I got to find my first pair pretty swiftly, but you know I should have been able to predict that pair. So we saw that pair in the back. I don't know why I did a U prime, another U prime. So basically this is bad look ahead because I solved that pair and the first thing I do is a U prime without a reason and then another U prime. That's because I cannot find pieces, you know? I found this pair, sold it into the back. Now watch what happens here. So you see this is like the blue red corner. This is the blue red edge. So basically, you know, a normal person, like a normal person would just do Lefty moves to pair it up, right? And then insert it. But for some reason, I decided it was a good idea to rotate, make a pair and rotate back. Why? Why? And this is something I noticed in so many solves. Like I have the reflex to rotate when it isn't necessary. I, I try to avoid doing lefty moves by rotating, which is funny because I mentioned it before in this channel that you shouldn't do it. So reflex to rotate, bad look ahead, and not doing lefty moves. That, those are the main things in my F2L. And then we have one more thing. Let's just watch it normally, because I think the rest is decent. OLL is good, PLL. One thing I want to mention here is my timer stops are horrible. Like, look at this. <laughs> I'm basically just using my palms right here. So yeah, that was the first solve, not a great solve. By the way, guys, this is, this is personal, right? This is like sharing your browser history, so... This feels kind of uncomfortable, okay? I'm, I'm showing you my worst souls, okay? Anyways, let's go to the next one. Once again, the thing I noticed right away is that I did a lot of rotations and my last layer was pretty decent. So first of all, right here, I did like 15 seconds of inspection time, which is if you want to find your first pair, it is perfectly okay to go over 15 seconds. Here's the solve. Yeah, one more mention, I wrote this down as well. I do a lot of regrips during my cross building. So you notice that I do like three regrips in this cross. I would say that my cross solutions are pretty decent, but I think I should finger trick them better. So I, I, I kind of want to work on that as well. One, two, three, three regrips. So I actually got to figure out my first pair because I, I see that I sold that pair like right away. Oh, look at this. That, that were three rotations for one pair. And that's really bad. It's also diagonal pairs. Like sometimes you can, can't avoid like solving diagonal pairs, but I think I could have done a better job at preventing that. I think the rest was decent. Yeah, but look at these rotations. It, this is horrible. Like, I should prevent doing rotations. I think the last layer was, was decent. Yeah, that was, that was totally fine. Okay, then, then we have here the last solve I want to show you guys. There was so many mistakes in this solve. So first of all, uh, inspection time, 12 seconds, so that's, that's decent. I went straight to my first pair, so I think I, I was able to predict that, which is good. Two rotations for the first pair, two rotations for the second pair. Last pair was decent. Look at it was pretty bad, because this is like one of the easiest cases to recognize, but 
look at was pretty bad, but anyways, insert that. Now here's the main problem of this solve. I, I noticed this COLL, I use COLL by the way, so I'm looking at all the corners, but I did the wrong, I, I, I did the right elk, but from, from the wrong angle, which is like pretty dumb. Then I ended up with another COLL, which I did. You can very easily predict your PLL, because these all stay in the same place. But I did my, I did my COLL and I did the wrong PLL, so I think I messed up there. I did a C perm, it was a U perm. So then I was like, oh no, this is a U perm. So I did my U perm and I managed to DNF that. <laughs> One last thing right here. So I had a corner twist at six and a half seconds with just a U perm. So I, this could have been like maybe a sub eight. You know, I had a corner twist, so I fixed that. And then did the, that fixed it. So, you know, the funny thing about this solve is that if we go to the average and look for that solve, which is right, this one, the 10.2. And the funny thing about this solve is that two solves before I had a 7.9, so that's really good. Then an 8.9, which is also really good. Then this could have been a very low eight, maybe even a sub eight. Then I had a plus two and then a low eight. So if I didn't mess up this average, this could have been like a very low eight second average, which, which would have been really good, but you know that corner twist totally messed up that average i just wanted to mention that now I, i'm not going to end this critique like this because that's like too too much negative stuff happening right so i just want to end with this solve so this was a full step with a dot case with a g perm a low seven so you know, some souls are pretty good. I think I don't think it was perfect. I probably should have avoided the dot case, but it isn't all negative, okay? This was a great solve. Now, before we're ending this video, you know what is happening right now. It is my live average I streamed on Instagram. Uh, previous week, I had a 10.34 average, so have I redeemed myself? Will I get a sub-10 average this week? Let's find out right now. Oh, 10.01, so that's not sub 10, 10.01, but the scramble was pretty trash. Ah, come on, that was really bad. Oops, 10.79, F's in the chat, guys. Oh no, I didn't insert. I didn't insert my pair. 11, no, 12.28. Ooh, ooh, guys. <laughs> so we have a 10, 10.7, and a 12. Okay, I'm just going to use all my mental power to get like two eight second souls, okay? <sighs> yeah, F's in the chat, guys. This is bad. This is bad. Even if I get my best time right now, the average will be like 10.4. That's really bad. Let's just get the best time at the end, because it can still be worse than this. Wait, my phone stopped recording. It's a 9.9. .9. So the average is 10.36. It's kind of funny because it's almost exactly the same as previous week, which was a uh, 10.34. You know, this is the counting average, but you know, I want to do another one. I want to redeem myself. Oops, I dropped, I dropped my cube. Oops. 